we are pleased to present the first of a series of newscasts by the distinguished British commentator, Miss Jean Cardigan, well known in England for the intimacy of her portraits of the great and the near great. Miss Cardigan has been described as the sauciest bite in Britain. Tonight, just 12 hours after arriving in America, she gives us her maiden American broadcast from the colorful sitting room of an old friend in Maidstone. In the last few months, people are speaking more and more of Norman T. Kingsley, the movie director, for president. There's been such a quick wind of interest that I have been invited over from England to keep a reporting eye on him and give you, by the way, a sample of British television, my style. Jeannie Cardigan, at your service. Deep in my dungeon, I welcome you here. Deep in my dungeon, I worship your fear. Deep in my dungeon, I dwell. I do not know if I wish you well. Deep in my dungeon, I worship your fear. Deep in my dungeon, I welcome you here. Deep in my dungeon, I dwell a bloody kiss from the wishing well. La 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 dee, la la I'm going to give you his biography and what my department has assessed are the salient facts. Norman T. Kingsley was born in Brooklyn in 1921. I feel that it is crucial that we understand some of the background. His father was a Russian immigrant. His name was Raymond. He was a what? man. What was his name? Raymond. Raymond. Raymond, Raymond Kingsley. Okay. He was a man of good intention and mediocre performance. The mother came from a, how can I say it, a melting pot background. The dominant racial trait was Welsh. There is a rumor of some gypsy. <coughs> There's also a rumor of some Irish and Jewish in her background, and one source tells me that there was a touch of Negro. This has not been confirmed. He went to Erasmus High School in Brooklyn, and as a result of his scholarship, he was awarded a four-year general scholarship to Princeton University. He chose architecture as his field, he distinguished himself as a scholar at Princeton. The dominant fact of his college days is characteristic of the man as a whole. He is indigenous, original, and some would say a bit bizarre. If uh, we get into a scene which might possibly demand that you take your clothes off or some part of them to fulfill, to fulfill the aesthetic demand of the scene, then I can't have a little ninny there at that point who says, but I don't want to, or I won't. 
Well, under those conditions, I'd be more than glad to. He begins to make the films that have made him internationally famous. He earned a reputation in this country of an American Brunel. He is associated and thought of as a, on the, in the same league with Fellini, some say Carl Dreyer, some say Antonioni. It's not the box office, you're the box office on the picture, that I haven't seen in four months a girl with the kind of presence you're looking for for this. Miss Lorelli? Yes. Lorelli. Yes, would you sit down over there, please? Say, my speech entreats that I may know the less. My speech entreats that I may know the less. That I may know the less. Louder, please. That I may know the less. Why gentle peace? Why gentle peace? Does not expel her inconveniences. Does not expel her in inconveniences. Say that again. Does not expel her inconveniences. What do you think? Oh, I think she's got hopeless diction, but she's a beautiful girl. She smiles too much. In our research, we've had two uh, extraordinarily adept psychiatric interpretations. I will give them to you briefly. One is that there is a unforgiving and relentless side to his nature, rooted in the desertion as a boy by his mother. You've never acted, have you? Never. I, I have no. What do you What do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? I'm a airline hostess. But you decide you want to act. Yes, it's a dead end street. Being I an airline some, hostess. Yes. Why well, is a dead end street for a beautiful girl like you? It's just so far you can go. <clears throat> Let me tell you, you're absolutely beautiful eyes, but you have a very thin little mouth. It's not worth much of your mouth. Can we see your profile, please? Gorgeous profile, but a little too hooked. The other is, and this is, I, I, again, I'm, I let me stress, I am quoting the psychiatric authorities that we have hired to do research on this. The other is a suspicion of a proclivity toward Greek love. <laughs> this has never been substantiated, as you know. You've heard the rumors. Greek love. Thanks. Before you go, I want to ask you one question. If the, if the scene should call for it, in other words, if it were dramatically uh, viable, if I may say, uh, you'd be prepared to take your clothes off. Right? Yes, to, yes, yes, I'd yes. love to. Eagerly, yes. yes. <laughs> All right, good, my dear. All right, I think we may be able to use you in the movie. Move, please. Terry Walker, I believe, isn't it? Yes. yes, come in, Hello. Terry. Uh, just you. stand here a minute. This is Mr. Kingsley. How do you do? How do you do? So I don't you do most wonderful director I've ever met in my whole life. Oh, well, thank you. You're practically hired already, my dear. Thank you. Listen, you're, 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 you're beautiful, and you're lovely looks. But you know, you do have these deep wrinkles here. You've got to do something about it. You've just got to do something about it. I'd love to, to use you, but... I'll if, try very hard to get rid of them. You're going to have to do something with makeup or something. Right, but your face I'll, I'll is absolutely splendid. Hard. No, I can just see you. I would love to do it. I would love to. All do right, it. I want you in the movie. We'll, we'll, we'll take you. care of the wrinkles. They won't bother oh, you. I'm you, so happy. Uh, no, you have a marvelous face. <laughs> Thank you. Marvelous face, beautiful figure. Thank you. I want you to do a lot of this the next few days before we start work. All, All right, right, I will. All right. Yes. Thank you. All right. And uh, good. We've seen you, Terry. It's Diana. Diana. Yes. It's a pleasure. A pleasure, Mr. Caligari. Pleasure, Mr. Kingsley. Could you? Yes. Thank you. How much acting have you done? Oh, I haven't done any, but I've had a lot of exposure in the ring, and, uh... In the ring? Yes, in the ring. Well, what are you doing in the ring? I'm a woman wrestler. I believe mm -hmm. that good acting comes out of tyranny, out of a sense of slavery, mm -hmm. you understand? You'll be enslaved if you want to be a good actor. Mm -hmm. Right, right, Got right. it. I've got, got it very it. nice and easy. Okay. Uh, Norman Kingsley, as you know, lives on an extremely high social level, part of which is his association with the so-called jet set, the other part, however, is a life that he makes on his own. He's now living, as you know, in New York permanently. He is separated from his wife. He left very suddenly. He has had no contact with his five children this past half year. If you say, yeah, what am I going to do with you? You know, I have children, I have beautiful children, and uh, we were all together for a long time, and uh, I used to teach them not to say yeah. And it took me years. So how can I possibly teach you in a picture not to say yeah? You've got to give 100% to the thought that you will not say yeah. Yes, sir. Try yes. saying yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Are you a socialite? No. You've got that sort of very tight thing around the mouth. I would like to know what Mr. Kingsley's position is on Red China, Soviet Russia, the new African states, Israel, the Arab states. I have quite a menu from soup to nuts. Mr. Kingsley is uh, unable to pin himself down, to be pinned down publicly. We don't know what he really thinks. And I don't know that he knows or why that matters. The question is, can we make him understand what the right attitude is? I think he must make a decision um, one way or another. I'm just raising the point. I thought Rockefeller couldn't do it. I don't see it. Couldn't even get a nomination. All right, well, wait a second now, Dave. Why don't you just tell us then? All right, Rockefeller didn't make movies of a more esoteric nature that millions of people saw. Mm -hmm. Neither did Boone Well, for that matter. We have a person here who is able, in his weird style, of, to, 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 to get people to uh, respond to him. I don't know quite why. I don't know what his real thoughts are. I don't know whether we can control him or not. There is one person here who perhaps knows better than any of us, uh, Miss Oswald. And um, I don't know what she can tell us. I uh, know that you're working for Mr. Kingsley. You haven't begun to get to, the, to what he really is. You're just going on with a whole lot of tell facts. Us what he really is, then, you know. <coughs> I don't think I really know what he is any more than anybody else knows. You see, the sort of movies I make, I need people to work very quickly, very quickly. It doesn't matter how much talent you have. We've got to wait for you while you sigh and groan. Uh, 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 it's awful. Let's have a little Shakespeare now. Bap, like that. Anything. First line comes to your head. Right. Uh -huh. Oh, you want to groan, really groan. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Wakes me from my flowery sleep. Oh, I pray you, gentle mortal. <laughs> Sing again. <laughs> Mine. Ear is much enamoured of thy note. Ah, so is mine eye enthralled to thy look. Oh, and thy first virtue's force perforce doth move me to say, to swear. On the first view, ah, I do love thee. <laughs> His current activities are why we're here. He's making a movie, and I'd like to brief you very quickly on what that movie is. Some of you may be familiar with the Brunel movie. We have all these details. I'm assuming so carefully uh, that we, yes. I, I I'm sure you will decide about what's necessary. Uh, I'm giving you everything I know. It's my understand job. Understand the reason for it later. Please yes. understand that ultimately what we must decide, or at least consider, is whether or not we're going to allow this man to live. Mr. Kingsley may indeed be ripe fruit for assassination. That's not what I want you to work with a bigger voice in the picture. A big voice! Okay, You're going to be the girl with the big voice! I can project. No, it's going to be very big! Can we hear it once? Ah! Ah! Louder! Louder. Keep those, I'll get them. <coughs> hey, Eddie. Excuse the mouthpiece. Remember the last time we were working out, you cracked me in the face? You're supposed to hit me in the belly. Well, maybe I'll hit you all over this time. No, you won't, Eddie. We'll see. No, you're the man I trust. My belly, stay away from the ribs. You give me too much pounding in the ribs, and you know what happens? They hurt for two days. This is to get the nuts out of me, man. You understand? I like to punch the crazies out of you. You like to punch the crazies out of me? That's my talent. That's my talent. You don't love me no more, huh? Well, maybe we can talk about that later. You don't love me no more? Yeah, it's not a question of love. If you don't love me no more, nobody loves me no more.
Your belly, baby. I told you to get off my fucking head, didn't I? Uh, yeah, I told you to get off my fucking head, and you betrayed me. All right. I can use this. I use this head in the picture. Your belly's bigger. You gave me a shot in the head. Instinct. Written to us instinct. Eddie, I can't work out with you if you bump me in the head. I can work a picture. I can use my head. I'm sorry. I can't take too many shots in the head. You know that. Look, man, let me show you how I want you to work on me. Just easy stuff. All right. Get the tension out of me. Part of that, you know. Good stuff, yeah, go. Let go, let go, yeah, 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 right. Good, good. Ah, ah. Good, ah, good, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Who's in tight? You're in tight? Yeah. Yeah, shape. Okay. <laughs> I feel better. <sighs> Woo. In the last few days, I've been talking to a lot of my friends. They all seem to be obsessed with a new elite secret police organization called PAX. P A X C. Prevention of Assassination Experiments, comma, Control. I've heard a great deal of criticism of PAX. In fact, I've even heard that PAX excites assassinations rather than prevents them. I, for one, don't believe a word of this. Of course, all this spy talk, as I said before, can be grossly exaggerated. In fact, just the other day in a London newspaper with four million circulation, I read that I, Jeannie Cardigan, was a member of Cracks, the British equivalent of Pax. I've never heard anything more idiotic in my life. All America is aware of the circle of friends that gravitate around him called the cash box. The cash box is comprised primarily of men who have been long associated with Mr. Kingsley. The dominant member of the cash box is his half-brother, Ray, R-E-Y. Ray is a man about whom there is not only enigma, but there's a certain uh, proclivity toward a malevolence. This gang that hangs around, these are mostly animals, aren't they, except for his brother. Uh, they're uh, simian types, knuckle draggers, they, uh, uh, they hang, they, and they sort of mooch off or something. Uh, no, that's not exactly accurate. Uh, they are uh, the new, the barbarians are inside the gates, you can say. They're that breed. They may be Visigoths, <laughs> but they're extremely intelligent. Uh, they're not Bulgarians. Let me stress this about, about them. They're not vulgar. They are, according to certain tastes and standards, primitives. But they're extremely intelligent. I'm waiting for something, one way or another. I mean, you gentlemen are engaged in other fields of activity. My field of activity is operation. Operation is doing. Not to get moved, but to get moving. When you enter it, it's a very serious game. And you're playing it to win. Seems to me we ought to go ahead, whatever we decide to do, and get into the cash box. Put your finger in the till, baby. Put your hand in the box. For the first time in a long time, ever like ever, first time since I was a kid, I really don't know if I'm going to be able to pull something off. We got to move awful fast, because I don't know what's going on, but what I do know is something is shaping. Right, yeah. See, yeah, and right. I like when a, you know, like when a hurricane starts, you put one bomb into the middle of that hurricane and you knock it out right, before it right. starts. That's what we're gonna yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Ray is the top of the cash box, and I'm on top of him. It's like that, just as simple as that. 
Hey, you get your kicks being the cash box, great. You want to get out of it? You want to get out of the box? You just get out of it. If I get out, it might be bad. Yeah? How would it be bad? Wait and see. All around could be you bad. You threatening me? No. I'm just not taking orders. Well, we can't have you in the cash box if you're not taking orders. Because I tell you, Louise, I need everybody's allegiance for the next two weeks. You got my allegiance. I got your allegiance. But you, you got my allegiance. I got your not allegiance. Raul. But bullshit. Sure, it's bullshit. You're part of the scene, man. The storm coming, baby. It's yeah. thunder and lightning. Rain. Destruction. Black destruction. Jenna, Jenna. Right. Oh, okay. Get her hair out of her face. Okay. Right profile. Left profile, please. Right profile, please. Good. Now, say something really nasty Good. and mean. Oh, damn you. Yell again. Damn you. Yell. Go. Ah! <laughs> Try not to look insipid. Look right into the camera. Jump up and down. <laughs> no, no, I want a real laugh. <laughs> no, no, that's... What? No, no, stop. <laughs> Well, John, you can come and stay with me always. No, you see, what I really want with your house is I want to bring a movie company to your house. The whole lot of them? About oh. 50 or 60 people. Darling, I don't know if you've noticed the funny thing. I have a no smoking sign. I adore my house. about this house for years. I've taken just one look at it. Yes. Fabulous. You asked me, what do I think of opulence? I think that opulence, whether it is good or ill, is precisely what I need for my movie. That means I bring in about 30, 40, 50 actors at one time or another. They put out cigarettes on the ground. They make a mess. That brings in the stud farm, too? You, you talk about that, that group that some people choose to call the cash box? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That group? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll be here, too, sure. Okay. But I can keep them under control. you all to be assembled here because the time has come to talk about the movie we're going to make. Some of you are professional actresses, some are not. Given the particular fashion in which I make a movie, the fact that you're a professional actress is not necessarily always of aid or assistance. It can be an impediment. But I would naturally work in a different way than those of you who've acted before and those of you who have not. I'm going to make a picture about some men who work in a brothel. They work in a brothel to make women. <coughs> I don't believe in making sex exploitation films, as they're called. I'm really a very squeamish man, as you'll come to discover. I'm interested in sexuality, uh, rampant and resplendent, but always in consummate taste. I can't bear bad taste. I will use each and every one of you in any way I can. I will ask none of you to do anything which will completely violate you. On the other hand, I may push several of you to find yourself in emotional and, dare I say it, anatomical situations which will be more intense than any, perhaps, that you've had quite the same way in your life. I mean, if I'm asking you at a certain point to make in love to someone who you find attractive, yes. you follow, right. and you're thinking about that man you're in love with across the street, and you burst into tears at a moment where you're supposed to be quite no, gay, no. we've wasted half a day of shooting. No, in other words, you're cold-blooded, right? I like to You're cold-blooded. You can be in love with one man and experience a great deal of pleasure with another man, correct? That's why I call it cold-blooded. You're cold-blooded, right? Okay. I won't know at a certain point whether I'm making a movie that's beautiful or a movie that's slightly pornographic or pornographic. I really won't know. The only way I can get what I want to get in this movie is to push out of that place. Because you're going to see how this awful lot is going to go on. It's going to offend you too quick. Yeah, but that does not mean that's going to be the movie I'm making. I mean, if you see a couple of people wallowing in a closet before they go on and do a scene, that's their business. Mm -hmm. They're going to do what they want to do to get ready for that scene. Of course. That doesn't mean I'm going to ask you to do it or that I necessarily approve it. I detest that part of the picture if you want to know the truth. Well, you're not a dyke, are you? No, that's a, that's a funny term. Uh -huh. I don't like it. No, not All right. a dyke. More, you know. more, more deeper than that. I have, huh? I have a wide scope. Um, I look at things, you know. Yes, yes, I know what you way. mean. Yeah. Man is woman and woman is man, and, and why bother to decide which is which at any given and instant? Never the twain. There's something about you. You have an obvious sort of sexuality. You are a screwball. I can see that looking at you. You'll go do anything if the situation is appropriate. That's my guess. Mm. 
I wish there were some way one could make bets on women. I wish women were horses. I'd be a multimillionaire. And I'll tell you, I tell you why I picked you. You've got absolutely fabulous eyes. Beautiful, beautiful eyes. Oh, but I think one of your eyelashes is a little loose. <laughs> Listen, you, you have such a bad job. Do you know that? Look at your hair, it's getting all gray. You're about the same age I am, and you're getting to be an old gray-haired man. You know that? Why don't you live a little? <laughs> what do you want, man? Why don't you just tell me? What do you want? I come out here to just yeah, ease my mind. And... What? Well, just say Let's it. Skip this, all right. Go back to your fishing. OK. It's Would you allow me to continue talking? But if I keep making you nervous, I can't get much of a performance out of you, can I? No, not That's at all. what I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. You might be extraordinarily talented for a while, although I think you're a dumbo. That's my personal opinion of you. Well, you think I'm a dumbo? Why? Well, you haven't oh. impressed me. No, with I, I reject that, really. I don't really? think I'm a dumbo at all. I think I'm pretty intelligent. Yeah, what could you play in this movie? You know, I think I'll have well, you play I, in this movie. I, I, I think I could play anything you gave me to play. I'm going to have you play the cook. The cook? The cook Why? for the whorehouse. Why? 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 The cook for the whorehouse? Yeah. You, do I impress you with the cook? Sort of. How? I don't know. What something about you. Peasant hands or something? Well, what? you're like a, like a big, strong, eager peasant. Yeah. 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 No, no, yeah. no. I disagree with you. I don't think I'm right for a role of cook at all. You got little ice picks for eyes. I've acted also. I've done films. Well, I know, but I don't, I don't, there's nothing between us that works. You know, like you're an intelligent girl, you're bright, you seem very nice, but nothing seems to happen when we talk to each other. Well, it might be me, you know, it could well be me. I don't, I don't sit and judge on all these matters. Some girls I, you know, see, I find more comfortable to work with than others. Well, um, do you think that would uh, make it impossible for me to have a part and act? I think I, I would really if like you were to, to come, have a part. If you were to come to this house as a client, what would be your reason for going there? As a client? Yes. Of yours? No, well, as a client of the house. In other words, you would go and you would pay money and have a man. Um... Well, I would like to, uh, again, I would like it be a double reason, because I would like to go in it and also sort of find out about it. Maybe if I, you know, wanted to get some, write a scoop or something like that secretly, so that people, you know, would You'd be doing it for a newspaper. Yeah, in other but words, no one would know. In other words, you would have a male files inserted up your vagina, and you would pay money for that privilege in order to write for a newspaper? I really think you belong to an insane new breed. I don't know you very well, but, you know. <laughs> you I mean, like I, I mean, like I... <laughs> You're not back in Baptist prayer meeting. Now, you're not going to duck my head under and convert me to Listen, anything, you know. Understand so this. just look. stop and let's get right down Listen. and cut out the okay. crap. Please. My job is to know. All right, please, let's. You're disturbing my fishing now. Now, please tell me what it is you came out here to tell me. Look, my job is to know stuff, you know. Uh-huh. I got, I got about 1,500 people whose job is just to find out stuff from me, you know. Well... They aren't all, you know, geniuses, but they find out. I mean, they work hard. I dig that. I understand okay. that sad story. I understand. Now look, I, I know a lot more about right. you than you know about me. I'm listening to you, but just get out of this hypnotic tone okay, and okay. just get right into it. What did you want to tell me? Well, maybe you don't want to hear it. I, I don't think this sort of thing. I don't want to just be, be one of these people that walks in one of your films and walks out. and it, I've got too much going for me, you know, without doing little tiny scenes and some little, forgive me, marvelous little film. In one short sentence out of that, you know, what is it, all this other stuff? Because you've got a mind that's like your IBM. Now, tell me what the card says. I think you put all the data in it and you come out with a card. You and wanna what, know? It all, what does it say? You want to know? I want to know. I wouldn't be surprised if one of those torpedoes that works and hangs around your brother, they'll take a crack at you one day soon. Well, I really don't think that, uh, that you really are using me to the best advantage. You know, like, they, they, they're they destroying everything. I mean, like, like, look at this place. Look at how beautiful this is. You see? And, and, uh, you know, like this house is uh, built, you know, like 200 years ago, and this could be the headquarters. I mean, this could be the headquarters for, for, for your movement. I mean, you know, the black power could, I mean, is have that, this. Is uh, that Negroes that you're talking about? Uh, yes, yes, I mean, like, you know, you boys, you could all be in here, you know? Boys. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right, I mean, like, you know, like your people, I mean, you could have this. 
I mean, well, if we accepted this, will we be men? Will we be men if we accepted this? Well, I mean, you are men. You see what I'm just trying to explain. Why do you, to you say boy? What does that denote to you? Well, I mean, I mean, you know, like I just said, a bit of boys. You know, I'm like you a, call a, a tall, boy. tall air boy, don't I, Paul? Just this afternoon, he had an extraordinary wing to do ding on the playing fields of Princess Baromi's Maidstone Estates. He's receiving his political delegations while he's making this. Six movie. What's taking so long? Can we have you out here, please? Come on, can we quickly, please? Okay, now, can we start? Can we, we want stills of all of them in a group together. Now, come on, girls, you've all, you're all models and you're all actresses and you know what it is to pose for camera. A very seductive pose. On the lawn, during the shooting, but nothing to do with it, I saw one girl undress another. The cash box was everywhere to be seen. They're a strange lot for a man who may or may not be running for president to surround himself with. During the afternoon, I saw a black member of the cash box uh, mooching with a, a pretty young white girl. Nothing to get excited about, but it's not quite what we English would consider as American as apple pie. Everything was chaos. Wait, that's right. Come out. You know, listen, I, I'm going. I'm going for him. To be the president because first I know off, him better than you, press secretary. and you and you guys. So yes, I don't want to. I don't want to. The name is T. Well, who's the chairman? T. Bag. T. E. B. A. G. Sing. Do you have any idea what life is in the slums? No, I think life in the slums is very, very bad in a lot of ways. I also think it's very good in a lot of ways, believe it or not. What I mean by that is not that everybody be happy in their poverty. I mean, I think, I think there's a tremendous amount of waste in the slums. But I also know some very fantastic people come out of the slums. If your father drinks all the all time and he comes in drunk in the middle of the night and he's always beating you and your sisters and your brothers and your mother doesn't care anything about it and you're just fed up with all this, you're going to take drugs, you're going to find some sort of escape. Now, what do you think about this? How can he know anything about it and he was never black and he was never poor? Well, he's... Uh... Well, there's the faculty of the human imagination. That's good. Imagination. Uh, yes. I mean, we're living with this real problem, and you're imagining it. But please. But listen, listen, listen. Please. I think, it's it's unfair. I think you're just here BSing people because you want the black vote. And you think, like, us coming here, and you give us this big story about you want to help the black ghetto. You once were, at one point, in slums and didn't have anything. You want, you want to convince us that you're on our side. I don't think you are. I just I think you want I'm our on vote. Your side. I don't know if I'm on your side. How do I know if I'm on your side? But that's uh, what the, uh, I'm the saying, base of it. I'm saying that I think I can do as much as the next white man. And until you people have the power to have a black man for president, you have to consider whether you uh, want to vote at all for any white man at all. And if you are, some of you may consider that. I don't know. If some of you are going to say that, then I just submit that I'm the best white man around. That's all. Uh, I'll say one thing for him. He, he got hit very hard today by a lot of questions. And uh, he's convincing. He's very convincing in his, in his manner and his being able to parry and thrust. Of course, you're one of eminent people of this country and you've been an ambassador several times and all that sort of thing and and, and, and I'm delighted to he hear you talking about him in a, in a truly serious way. Right. What do you feel about all the cash box business and all those rather strange cash things he has? Cash box business, I, I'm scared of it. I believe it's good to have a movie director arranging people, staging them all the time. Won't this cause a lot of trouble? I think that... he would come in with something a little fresher and probably well, he would, more he, he would stage things differently. I would hope so. This is my assistant, Miss Bruce. Your, uh, Mr. Your Kingsley. Assistant. Yes. Uh, How do you do? Excuse my wet hands. Certainly. I'm terribly pleased to meet you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, and I'm pleased to meet you too, I think. And your name is McCarthy. I'm Adeline McCarthy, yes, oh, Dr. McCarthy. I know who you are. You're the president of Ladies College. That's right. Of course, the famous McCarthy. Lady McCarthy. Well, I want to find out what you stand for, what you represent, what you mean to people. I don't want to see a myth get into office. What credentials have you to guarantee your superiority? I'm willing to grant what you a certain excellence. What credentials have the blacks got? They have the rights of they decades the, of oppression. They have the inner confidence. That's really what it is. That's all it comes down to. You can be oppressed for centuries and just feel rotten. Or you can be oppressed for centuries and have an inner confidence. Just because you're sublimely self-confident? I'm not sublimely self-confident. I'm confident about one thing. What? No, I'm confident that uh, there's an end game on. You know, that, that I think you're right and that all sorts of things are going on and that nobody, nobody alive has any power anymore over historic events. Now you gotta explain yourself when you're talking about power, baby. I'm a 
flaming power. Yeah. Give me ten. Cause we all want some. Sit down. Dig it. Sit down. 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 Sit I said, shut up. Mm-hmm. Now you listen. Idiot. God, do you know you who you're talking used, to? Shut up. Who you are you talking used, to? You people. Why don't you do what you believe hey, in? Look, you don't bitch. anybody. Use yourself. You bitch, get out of here. Use yourself. Get out of here. Bitch, get on out of here. Get out of here. Man, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. What's your thing? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Shut up, bitch. What's your thing? Wait a minute. You want power? Put your hand down. You want power? Put your hand down, punk. Sit down. Sit down. Hey, faggot, you know put your hand down. down. Look, this is what I'm saying. All right? I can listen, but let's be rational. <laughs> sit down. Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. Keep you cool. Okay. Cool okay. your broad. Let's Boy, sit down. If the broad's working for look, you, you black, be you're supposed no, to be look, here. Sit down. Okay, look. Well, sit down, boy. Okay, I say, hey, look. Get up, boy. Get up. I think I have a certain sense of balance. I think I can inhabit the center of a storm with a little more grace and delicacy than other people and can. And manipulate the multitudinous forces around? I manipulate them, uh, turn them a little, and they turn me. I mean, I'm influenced yeah. by what I see as well as trying to influence. And what do you see? Oh, I see an extraordinary apocalyptic time where, where the best and worst of people are both rising to the top at a great rate. You yeah. may be right, you know. Yeah, I might be. You know. And if you're not? I don't know. I mean, I'm a catalyst. I set, forth, I set loose forces. If I'm not right, then yeah. I'll set loose terrible forces. And this is a chance we have to decide to take. Well, you'll always, that's why I'm interested in talking to liberals. You'll never take that chance. You'll always vote for, for, the, you'll always vote for, the, for the more sober choice. If you are I mean, you would vote for J.K. Galbraith before you'd ever vote for me. He's a reasonable man. I know, he's an ass. He's a tall, skinny ass at a very high level. He's a very serious scholar. He's too serious. He wouldn't know what to do if he was talking to a hooker. I don't know what that means. Well, I like a... <laughs> I don't want that, man. No, come on, man. Dig it, man. Dig it, man. Dig it. Dig it. We know the brother's groovy. He's got what it takes, man. I say this, man. Well, you gonna fuck him or is I'm gonna I just say this, man. Oh, boy. Oh, that's cool. I say this, man. Like, maybe what I think is power is wrong. Damn straight. But you see, I'm willing, I'm willing to come to turn with the situation. I would like to feel that you were as serious, that you were not playing with the destiny of a nation just because of your own ego and your own public kind of image. Well, I can't give you an answer to that. Maybe I'm just Why not? Being a, maybe because I am a narcissist by definition. I'm, I'm an actor, a director. You know, I'm, I don't fascinated, I'm fascinated with exposing me. myself to multitudes. Do you understand? It's anything that really gives me pleasure. Anything that gives me pleasure to be absolutely without shame. Can you comprehend that? Yes, I can. I like I public love speaking myself. I, I adore shocking people. So let's get this together. You want to hold hands with my woman? You know, like when I ain't around, you know, like she might need some protection, you know. You know, like you want to protect her? You want to protect her from me? Or do you want to protect my woman from, like, her, her real man? You know? What do you want to do? Win. What day? Man, look, man. Let's, 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 look, man, look, man. Look. I'm trying to dig it, man. I just don't know what to do there. Forty of them out there. Fifty of them. Out there. They all want to see you. We've got Paul holding them off. We've got quite so much security. Well, I hope you'll stay on the ground. Thank you. I'm Dear lady, very glad to have met you. That's a pleasure. Give my regards to your students. I hope they're not striking. Heaven forbid. Goodbye. There's three little quip out there. I checked with the press agent. Between the three of them, they've got 37 million readers. Will we talk to them for a few minutes? Can we have a shot with the still man? Can we have a shot with the still man with these young ladies? Do we have a still photographer here? Oh, they're never here when you need them. <laughs> NTK, this young lady won a contest among 14 million American uh, teenagers, and the prize of that contest was to interview you. <laughs> what, are you satisfied that you won the contest? How do you feel about the new sexual freedom in America? Uh, I think a lot of it is uh, athletics and gymnastics. I tell you, uh, I think sexual freedom is good until it injures your sense of smell. By the time sex ceases to smell good, you've had enough of it. I think some of the readers of this magazine might want to know, Paul, uh, what day's your birthday? Now, you're the Russian delegation. Uh, yes. From, from where? We are from Moscow. From Moscow. Oh, you're a communist. But of course. Jail for smoking what grows in, out of the ground. Yeah, you're nice people. You never hurt anybody. But no. you're a luxury. 
You could be an asset to the society. It's not well, I don't know how. I mean, I mean you know, your brains us, are all bombed You could out. give us all, all $500 a month. Okay. No, we're not trying to burn money. Either. You need someone's president because you need someone to hold the country together. Let's stop kidding exactly. around. Let's exactly. stop kidding around. Exactly. You know, I've come to these estates here for one particular reason, which is you people on estates understand the whole nature of an establishment. And you know that finally, if anybody's putting an estate together, loves his land, he loves his grounds, he does everything he's accomplished. And you people see that it's about to crumble and fall away and disappear. And you're looking for someone who can hold it together. And I'm one of the few people who might be able to do it. And I'll tell you something else. I don't know if I want to do it. I'm too lazy and I'm too tired and bored with the whole idea. And on top of that, on top of that, it's a terrible little price one might have to pay for it. What's that? One might lose one's retirement pay. Uh, Mr. Griswold wants to see you. I think it'd be a very good idea. Why are the young people backing you? They, they turn to the movies. <laughs> And the more they go to the movies, the more they admire those little magicians who make movies. Because I'm not a politician, I'm a magician. You know, what it comes down to, and I'd like to point this out to you, Mr. Griswold, but what this really comes down to is that the country has gotten to so poor a point that being president is equivalent to being a monkey in a shooting gallery. <laughs> you see, they put the chair here. He mounts the chair. They string the rope, rope around his neck, kick the chair out, then he swings. It and breaks has, the neck. And he has an erection. Oh, a whiz.
says you've got to wrap it up. We're going to need the room. Okay, fellas? Give another minute or two. Oh, God. It needs something else. <laughs> what a way to leave a person. <laughs> uh, where are my things? I've never, like, slept with a Negro guy. And I've never slept with a Spanish guy. I was just with a And, you know, like, with, that, with dark skin and everything, yeah. you know? And I've heard that... You heard they're good. Yeah. Well, some are very good. You know. <laughs> you know, some have problems, but some are very good. Uh -huh. Yeah, they might be so good that you might form a habit, you know. <laughs> and then you're in terrible trouble. So what? So what? You obviously I mean, never had a habit in your life. You don't know what a habit no, is. No, but it's not like a habit. It's like when I was, when I was 13, like, I, still, I formed a habit of surfer boys. I mean, I met a surfer boy, and I'd never met a surfer boy before. And wow, you know, groovy. And then, like, when I was 17, I met a hippie, you know, or like a kid at BU, you, you know, and a lot of sort of hippie guys and came out, wow, you know, like, and so then I had a hippie habit. So, you know, like, and now if I meet a Negro and I get a Negro habit, big deal. You went from surfers to what was it? Well, not in general. When I was seeing surfers, you know, I still saw, like, a very, you know, a hippie type guy, mm -hmm. you know, and I've known a lot of Negroes. I've just never uh, ever bought one. Huh? Oh, they get very mad when they're bought. Very mad when they're bought. Well, listen, we got a lovely little Negro fellow for you. Right at the moment, we're short on blacks. Just, let me tell you, black militancy, black militancy has hurt my business beyond belief. I got you asked me if I didn't want any freak scenes, but I'm asking you, like, if you well, don't you. want them to hurt you, you know, like. Or, uh, like, hold you too hard or grab your arms too much. Well, they're not likely to hurt yeah. you. They could wound you spiritually very easily. They could uh, say something to you you wouldn't forget. I don't worry about my spirit. Look at them, madam. Hmm. No, we weren't meant to kiss each other. That's only because my mouth is dry, because um, I was nervous. Wait. Well, here we are. It's like Dorothy Parker. Well, what if it were... I mean, what if it was spiritual? I mean, doesn't that ever happen? No. I've never gotten my back. Well, you never lose it. I mean, it's there somewhere. I lost it years ago. Uh -uh. I ceased to be spiritual years ago, and I retired for that reason. You're very the, spiritual. In the, hope, in the hope that it would come back. Mm -hmm. And it's never come back. It has not come back. I seem to be very spiritual, but it's quite possible that I'm diabolical. Oh, well, you're also diabolical. Anybody who's... Anybody who has a tremendous element of good, who's also you, they're also fantastically evil. A dear Irish poet, whom I knew once, said to me, the devil is the most beautiful creature God ever created. Now, you know, at my best, at my legendary best, I have to be one of the 500 men in the world who could qualify. The latest bulletin from NTK's sexual front is that ultraviolet star of many a Andy Warhol movie is going to film a scene of all-out lovemaking with a young black man. Another cinematic first for Norman T. Kingsley. I'm still horny. What about you, baby? How much would you eat? I'm resting right now. But you come back later. Come on. You gonna keep your pants on? What kind of a whore are you? I understand my son is here. Ma'am? I understand my son is here. Can I just want 
for a while? Well, you can find some water elsewhere. This is being used. Oh, rats. Would you like to swim? Oh, I thought we could have some privacy. You can have some privacy. Can we have some privacy? You mean I have to swim here with him in this little pool? Do you mind doing that? No. Not at all, huh? Okay, why don't we swim? Okay. It's clear room. Send my men back in. I heard about this place. I don't I don't know why I'm here. You're married? Yes. I'm married. I want to pay someone. I want to sell. And I want the price to be high. That's absurd. It's well, not absurd to me. You can spend a thousand dollars. I want to. I want to. I want to use it like toilet paper. What you could use like toilet paper. Which is a beautiful one. My God. My God, you're beautiful. You really love her. You sure you want to do it? A strange man doing this to you? Yes. Just like that? Then he goes further. You know, the brutes are. I have brutes here. And you're the sort that you see. Oh, you're the sort that needs a brute? I haven't paid you. That's true. What are you going to pay? Would you go out this way, please? Dungeon. Hey. I think Kingsley's afraid right now. I think Kingsley's heir apparent, whoever he is, would be afraid if somebody just blew Kingsley's brains out, you know? Uh, I vote for uh, the fake aneurysm, if you want. Well, maybe you're right. It's it probably over-sophisticated of me to, to go out the other, the other way. Okay. Pills. Pills. How long before you can get the stuff? Oh, half an hour. I have to admire you guys. You... Uh, you have your little organization, don't you? Just folks. I've never questioned the decisions of my superiors with regard to any assignment that was given to me. But here I am with a simple little thing called a gun. And in that gun is a simple little thing called a bullet. And that bullet has a greater sense of how the shape of the world shall be determined. The acts of the man make the man. Do you think it would be good if somebody removed him forcefully? I couldn't make that decision. You couldn't. Do you think it would be good if he were removed? Forcefully. I couldn't make that decision. You couldn't, huh? Something's come up. I'm sorry. Can I speak to you for a moment? Yeah. Excuse me. Do you know who's sitting on the terrace? Oh, oh. Valerie Brunel. Come on, she wants to see you. The last I time I saw her, she was very rapid.
I guess you're having about forgiving me. I guess you never will. See, I learned how to sing. But go. your heart out and you're dead. And I'm young and I'm alive. You didn't do that. I wrote a poem once about you and me. A one-line poem I called it Devils. Did you? Yes, I said one of us will be better looking huh. when it is all over. strong these girls. Oh, I mean, you can hit them with a baseball bat and they thank you. They're like old club fighters. They get mad when you miss. I mean, I've given ten girls a terrible time and they just blossom. And they have wonderful stuff. But they don't have the stuff that you used to have. No man. Da da oola, hey oh, hey oh, oh. I always thought when you went to that retirement that you were gonna come out someday. I thought you were gonna be the most beautiful recovery the world had ever seen. But then I've always been up. Sentimentalist. Why have you come out? See me? Come out, see me? Wish me well? 
Don't send me good know thought. if I wish you well. I don't know. When did you die? Griselda wants to see you. Kingsley? Who are you kidding? Take off the damn hat. Himmler has something similar. And the go balls with no balls at all. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. I won. We both won. The moment you oh, feel yeah. that you've moved from a serious no. movie about the Ooh. ambiguities and the resonances of sex to a movie which is tending to become pornographic, mm -hmm. you're likely to crack up on them. That's my worry. Mm -hmm. See, let me tell you something. I don't care if you're an actress or not. You'll be getting into this sort of picture. The reason I'm interested in your private life is not because it's any of my business, which it most certainly is not. Whoa. Now, listen. I don't know whether you children got it clear or not, but there is an awful lot going on this weekend. We had to make our toys. Did you ever have to do this? Do you know what it really feels like? <laughs> Are you serious in your mind? I suppose not. 
They can live on one herring a month in a ghetto in Vilna, Riga. They have a marvelous rhythm, those people. I think he'd hasten the crumb book. I want to know much more about him. What qualifies you for president of the United States? Listen, bum, what Puerto Rican means? You're not qualified. You Who? never make it, baby. You are. like a woman that has too much love, fat boy. What's and you can't do? make it anymore. What's the for you? <laughs> and all your evil's in your uh, stomach. Uh, hey! Hey! Three cheers for loyalty. You see, I speak for a different kind of person. For the young, educated, hopeful, liberal woman, perhaps. And I'm frightened. <laughs> Do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, I kind of like short, stocky men. It's so hard, God, it's so hard. Even one of the candidates for my pimp. I don't know if I wish I you well. I don't know if I wish you well. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I wish you well. I don't know if I wish you well. Well, you're really good and everything, but I've got a boyfriend. I'm the male equivalent of a whorehouse mama. Hmm? Here you. Hey, hey, company, how are you? No, come on, you sound like an MGM oh, chorus oh, line. Oh. So get all this out of you now, all this frivolity. Hmm? Oh! Don't they air condition these rooms? It's too close to sexploitation, what we're doing. <laughs> I'm tired of making poverty movies. Well, I'll take them. You're on. Jim's now changing to NP38. He is no is he? What is he? Hmm? I've often wondered if certain people inhabit certain bodies that don't belong to them. <laughs> I hate NTK. I hate NTK. I I hate NTK. 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 Do you sing anymore?
been assassinated. I didn't hear you. Chula May is here.
these streets. Get off of me! 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 Will the music begin? Here's my hat. Wait a minute. You're still getting even. And that ain't fair. I mean, don't call me in to work. Get even. Do you begin to have any conception of the kind of spot I was in last night? All you can think of is you didn't get a chance to play your scene. You know I didn't give you a chance to play your scene? Because you look like hell. You have no idea how bad you looked last night. What did you call me in for? I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't know whether I called you in because I want to get together with you again or I called you in because I want to kill a little piece of your heart. You just want to stomp on it.
I gave it up for you. I take all the chances. I do all the work. I get all the ideas. I get all the imagination. I work. I work with a hundred actresses in this picture. Hundred, hundred actors, hundred actresses. Tremendous number of people in this picture. Two hundred people before I was done. I had no trouble with any of them. Dummies. I'd rather work with a hundred dummies than one. That's time. right, because you're afraid of somebody with talent, with real talent. Because they might steal something from you. Don't do that again. Take his stupid hat off. Sit down. Just sit down. That hat. Stands for the fact that I was up there in a little firing line. Yeah. And you want to act to see what me? What do you think? You want to act to see me? There's only one little thing you had to do. You said to get up on a platform with me. I didn't see you getting up on the platform with me. There are a lot of people who didn't get up on the platform with me last night. Maybe I was protecting you down front. Oh, who? See, it's been very good being away from you. I felt more powerful in the last six months than I felt in my entire life. Because I don't feel guilty. Do you understand? After 15 years living with you, I felt guilty. I had to be too true to too many things at once. Every time I made love to another woman, I just felt as if uh, I was just destroying something at home. You know, as if I were stealing blood from my children. And you set me free. I wish you'd go off with a black stud on a motorcycle every time. Oh, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. You really, you know, if you wanted to, uh, like, if you really wanted to hit me with all your might, you should have gone up to me and just said, see this big black-ass stud when I'm going off with him on his motorcycle and the hell with you, and I want a chance to look at him and fight it out with him. You understand? Of course I do. done in the last five days is we've made a movie by a brand new process. And I'm going to use a metaphor here. Most movies are made as a corporation product. You know, they're planned, and there's a corporation behind them, and they're turned out. Well, now, what we did is we made a movie as a military operation. When you have a military operation, what happens is you set out to take a given town, and your objective is to take that town, and as you go forward, all sorts of unforeseen contingencies arrive, and as they do, you go around them or you go through them, or you go under them. But the whole idea is, in a military operation, is that you get a certain amount of force moving, and then you move with it. And you discover what the reality of your attack is by attacking. So what we've been doing in the last five days, is we've been making an attack on the nature of reality, on, on what is reality. You can't say that this is real now, what we're doing. You can't say what we're doing last night is real. The only thing you can say is that the reality exists somewhere in the extraordinary tension between the two extremes of the relationship. Rip. Now, what, what, were your, uh, what was your attitude toward me? Well, I, I was in a constant conflict between you, Norman, as the man, and the character of Kingsley that you're playing. Well, that's because I'm a writer, you see, and the character I'm playing is a director. Yeah. And everybody knows that writers are nicer than directors. Uh -huh. <laughs> Even when you're aggressive, you're lovable. <laughs> Ron Hobbs looked at me the other day. His eyes were just brimming with love, and then he showed me what he could have done to my nuts. <laughs> and the love never left his eyes. <laughs> okay, last night made me unhappy. It mm -hmm. didn't make you perhaps unhappy. Well, that's because I know more about cutting than you do. Right, and I'm hopeful. I trusted you terribly up to that point because I thought that we had all been somehow subtly 
manipulated, exploited, and developed and educated by you in the course of the five days, you know, and brought to a kind of bloom. And yet there was this terrible conflict set up because we wanted, we were afraid of imposing on what you had in mind, that we, what we surmised you might have had in mind, and we were afraid of, of, of acting against you and getting squashed. Well, you see, what was going on was this, that we prepared, I knew that a great many <laughs> delicate and not so delicate plots were prepared by the other side. But what I also knew was that the situation I'd started was a sufficiently explosive one so that I didn't want them to be able to pull off all their games as they had planned them. See, this is a movie which involved acting which, had, which could have real ends. Now, I didn't, I didn't figure the real ends were going to take place. I didn't want them to take place. Yeah. But they were in my mind enough so that I was out to, to sort of like doll, as I say, doll and smash things I saw coming up. By the time I'd gone through the moves against you, I really felt it. Yeah, I really, I really didn't want you to carry on. And I was really pissed off that nobody bumped you off. Well, you know, that entrance what? last night was incredible for me. I felt possessed when I came in. Very bad. But finally, the thing I was trying to do in this movie, you know, if I'm trying to do one single thing in this movie, I was trying to show a man runs for president. Well, right. well look at the incredible contradictory quality such a man has to have. Now, of course, the man I had running for president could never, in reality, run for president. But in fantasy, he could. And in fantasy, he could be a parallel to a man like anyone, like Nixon, Rockefeller, uh, Humphrey, even McCarthy. They all have those sort of incredible, maniacal contradictions in them. You see, it's just they are all flattened down because it's all organizational and, and compartmentalized. But if you ever pull the lid off those guys, that's what they would be like. They would be like angels one moment, devils the next. And that was why I, I, I did my best to stage that in such a way that it would seem diabolical and overpowering. But what got me was when I got out there, I felt the way I'd, I'd planned it to be, but more, you know? So that was a spooky experience. I think you scared an awful lot of people. It was my intention to. Anything. I went out there with one thought in my mind, that was, don't mess with me, mother. But I felt that you scared some people off that shouldn't have been yeah. scared off. Yeah. You're still thinking of movies that are made where uh, you very carefully structure them you follow, and you get the maximum out of each moment. But what I'm arguing about in this method is that you cannot make a movie that way and get anything even remotely resembling the truth. What you get is you get a unilinear abstract of one man's conception of how something possibly might happen. But what I'm saying is that is not the way anything happens. The way anything happens is that it has five realities in a given moment, which then swing around to there, you see, or like this. Do you follow? Yes. In other words, it's sort of a tumbling, odd thing. You'll see when I cut the movie that what I'm going to try to show is that one's going to feel like one's on a roller coaster. You're going to slide from one reality to another, suddenly over there, here. Because <coughs> there's not anyone here, including myself, who can finally knows what went on in that movie. But the feeling I had is that it would all come together one way or another. We'll see. We'll see. You but think, I'm sure it did. You, you think it did? Well, the only surprise I'll have is I end up with the two st with styles that are finally incompatible. But mm. I don't believe that's going to happen. Let us give a round of applause to our host, who's been absolutely exceptional through this whole movie, Mr. Robert Lyon Gardner. But you want to go to that place Wonderful where those now. wonderful birds are? Yeah. Lone Tree yes. Hill? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Jock? Goodbye.
sort of liked this role of the patriarch going out with everybody, showing them a good time, and lording it over the family. So where does that leave us now? Well, we just have to search. And search. And search. And maybe if we just wait for a while. Kind of nice out here. Hmm. You crazy fool! You're supposed to die. You must kill Kingsley. You must die, you not Mailer. Not Mailer. I don't want to kill Mailer, but I must kill Kingsley in this picture. <laughs> Norman, you go to heaven. You go to heaven. No, baby. No, baby. You know you trust me. 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 Come on. You trust I'll trust me. you if you trust me. All right. All right. All right. Promise. Promise. All right. Okay. I go. Okay. Go. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. Oh, it's not easy to get up. No. Let me hit you. No, no. No. Hey! Will you cut this fucking idiot out? This is what I had to do. No! All right. Come here. Norman Mailer. Go, go, go on upstairs. Here, here. Go on. Rip. Right. Yeah. Rip. No, yeah. baby! I'm Get out of there. Get out of there. Yeah. You yeah. got yeah. kids are here yeah. and there ain't gonna be no fucking fight. I'll kill you. All right. I'll Stop kill you. All right. All right. Yep. Let's go up to the house. Go on. 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 Go on
Brother? Come on. You ain't my brother no more. We talked about trust. Yeah. You broke it. You got my brother. I did not break it. I did not break it. I did not break it. Think. Think, Norman. Think. Take the kiss of the Think. Think. Let's talk. No, baby. Forget it. No. I did a whole thing on trust. I did. Just wait. Yeah, I owe you one. Wait till the day comes, because I'll pull it. I'll pull it. You have pulled it. I'll pull it when you're tired. I got what you said. The picture doesn't make sense without this. You know that what it leads to. Fuck you. The picture doesn't make sense with my picture. And I know what I was doing with it. And what makes sense or what don't. You. The burn money that... That, uh... Didn't mean anything here. That was just a... A sham, too, huh? Get rid of the whore house, that was a sham, too. Huh? The whole thing is a sham. Right. Right? Yeah. What do you think I came back here for? I didn't need to come back here. That's right, you didn't. I didn't even invite but you But the today. picture... Go to the house! See, so you're Go playing there. The I have never... You did it in front of my kids. That's what I can't forgive you for. That's enough! Oh, That's it's enough! Win, win, win. Win. When is assassination ever planned? It's done. It's yeah, done. But you wanted to assassinate me, yes, the boy. That's your story, man. That's what you're pushing. That's what you're calling for. Yeah, you figure when I relax. No, you saw. I saw your eyes. Walk, try to get away. Get away. Hey, Rip, I tell you what, I don't want to talk to you no more. Because your dialogue is dull. Aye. You know, it just drags my dialogue. You. I didn't yeah. want any dialogue. You know I pull that punch. You know that. Sure, I busted the skin there. Oh, you didn't pull it quite enough. And I hit exactly even. I have never hurt an actor ever before in my life. Never drawn any blood. And that's truth, you know that. That's true. You know that. Well, if I was as ugly as you, I'd bury my head in shit. I don't have to worry about it. Which is what you do. You give me marks to be dirtier, uglier. I told you to be as beautiful as you could be in this movie. Oh. Which is like asking a cat. Well, no, wait that. a minute. I was trying to look like you. But anyway. You're just a fraud, aren't you? I'm a fraud and you're a cocksucker. Oh, no. You're the cocksucker. Well, the guy who comes in with a repetition is eating the shit. Fight anymore. That's right, baby. No fighting. It was just a scene in a Hollywood whorehouse movie. OK, baby? You know it's OK. And your dad knows it's OK. À la prochaine fois. Adiós. Para, para. Para. I leave the kissing to you. Yeah. And yeah, we'll leave the shit eating to you. No, no more. It's your special day. Yeah, treachery is yours. A champ. I salute champ of shit. And you're my take follower. one step backward from that one. Yeah, you're my follower. Yeah. No more. You might as well turn off this tape because he's a very dull talker. And he never stops as long as anything is run. Woo! Woo!